Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is Zimby. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take you through some of the latest updates in Zim. We'll look at it through the updates page, and that's available on the docs, and then at the top of the docs, you would click on updates. And that arrives here, or it's zimjs.com slash code slash updates.html. All right. Now, we did a bubbling a little while back, so here it was the last bubbling on raw. Let's see, raw, there it is, 6.6.2. .6 so there's been a lot of minor changes and some fun ones as well that I'd like to take you through, but it's, a, it's a, like a lot of text, a lot of talking. And what we'll do is in the next bubbling after this, we'll show you some examples that uh, relate a little bit to what we're talking about here. So the blob and squiggle, their points property uh, ha has changed. So um, the blob and squiggle used to have, well, it, it still does have a points parameter, and the points parameter is what you pass in. If you want, you can pass in specific x and y position of each control. So here's the control container, and then you can pass in the x and y of the circle within that and the rectangles on the end of the Bezier handles. Uh, you can pass in X and Y, and you can do that as well as a control point for each point in, in your blob or in your uh, squiggle. You can also just pass it a number of points, like say seven, and then it will make that stuff for you, um, and stretch it out or do, you know, do whatever automatically. But if you want, you can specify them as, as you pass that in. So that's points. That's the points parameter. Now, when it came to the points property, which you could get afterwards, the points property had a different format. It specified, now that the blob has been made, it was similar, it looked like this, and it had a reference to the control container. So not the control X and Y, but the control container, the circle, the rect, and the rect, and the control type for each point. And at that point, at that point, ha, 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 we didn't think that you would ever have to specify the points again like this, because once they've been specified, there's no need to do that. And then along came the transform manager, and the transform manager had a way to save transforms, and we added the blob and the squiggle to that. And at that point, we needed to set the points again using these values. And I was like, oh, darn. So what we did is we made the points property settable as well, settable with this format right here. But when you got the points, like when you asked for you asked for its value, then it replied with these properties. So it had two different formats. And that was kind of, uh, we realized after maybe that's a little bit finicky. So what we've done now is we, the points property is always the X and Y positions. And we've introduced a new point objects, which is an array of the Zim objects that make up those controls. The other thing is we were using the word sets for this, like a set would include the circle, the rectangle, and the rectangles that, that represented a set. Um, and so when we provided the the container, the sets container, we were talking about getting and setting, and, and we kept on using the word set in two different ways, and it became difficult to read in the documentation. So thanks, um, Chris, for pointing that out. And so we've no, we're no longer calling them sets. Instead, we're going to be consistent. We'll call them controls. So control represents the... Um, the container that holds the controls, in other words. So we don't have any more a sets property. We have a controls property instead. So the sets property is gone. It's been changed to controls. But unfortunately, controls was a Boolean saying whether we could see the controls or not. And so that's now been changed to control visible. So um, or was that controls visible? I think that was actually controls visible. So I might have to update that. Uh, let, let's see, see, shall we see? Go back to the docs, which are just right there. I really zoomed in. I type in squ for squiggle and hit enter. And come on down, what would we be looking for? A property here. So there's the methods, here's the properties. And controls visible, yes, that, that would make sense because controls, there are lots of controls. Controls visible. 
is good. So I'll update that in the <laughs> update that in the updates. <laughs> Lucky us. So back to the updates here. Uh, controls visible. That should be. And uh, that's enough for that. You can sort of read all about that in 6.7.1. Uh, 6.7.1 is a long one. It's a good one. So look at all that stuff. Mm, yummy. And there's some fun things in there. So I look forward to reading that. And that may have been because 6.7 itself, the, the sort of more major update there, semi-major update, was a little bit of a small one. We added this thing called a portal, which is almost a joke, but it's fun. Uh, so I'm going to show you an example of a, a portal, but it felt a little bit weak, as well as device motion. And if you think about it, device motion, heck, that's bloody cool because that's tilt uh, you know tilt and shake and stuff like that right on the frame so we can say frame dot on device motion and we get an uh, an event object and in that event object it has an acceleration property with x y and z showing you your device motion so that's pretty cool and, but otherwise you know it just <laughs> <laughs> Compared to other other uh, semi updates here, or semi major updates, uh, this was quite small. <laughs> um, so uh, we made up for it with six point seven point one, where we didn't add things necessarily, but we made modification. Well, we yeah, we made modifications to things that already exist. We cr created a chainable cache. Yay! So now we don't have to drop out of the chain to um, cache something, and not only that, but since we're caching things like circles, rectangles, triangles, uh, the blobs, squiggles, labels, etc., all of these Zim things, we know the bounds for those, so you can just cache, and cache will automatically cache to the bounds, plus um, half, the, uh, half the border width on each side, because cache needs to be a little bit bigger for that border, which sits outside of the bounds. So that's cool. So that means most of the things, 90% of the things are caching now. You don't even have to put in dimensions there. You can still put in dimensions if you want. And if you do, you can pass in just a width and height. You don't have to start at zero. If you pass in all four, starting at you know, uh, some X and Y, then it's X and Y width and height. So much like we handled the parameters for the containers and, and, and shapes and stuff like that. Okay, so that's nice, and it's chainable, like I said, so we can go say new circle, and there's the circle, and we can say dot cache and dot drag, and that's it. We don't have to, matter of fact, probably we wouldn't even have to put it in a variable, maybe not, unless we were doing a hit test later, or something. <laughs> okay, so uh, cursor, here's a chainable uh, cursor, so this is a short form for a cursor, and that was another thing, uh, and I mean, Putting this in is really nothing in Zim. There it is. That's it. We just say, hey, we've got uh, a cursor function now. Pass in what type you want. That's the CSS point, you know, cursor, like pointer or whatever. And then we're just, uh, you know, flowing through with this. We're taking that type and applying it to the cursor property and returning the object. And that means it's chainable. So uh, with that, like we used to have to say var circle is a new circle, center it on the stage, and then we drop out to the property. Circle.cursor equals pointer. And then because of that, we can't chain the on either. So now we're going uh, circle.on that. Well, now what we can do is say we don't even have a variable. So we don't even need a variable at all. We just say new circle dot center on the stage, set the cursor, and then Add the on onto the end. Now this will this will mean that this statement will not uh, return or won't represent uh, the circle object anymore. It represents the result of the on method. But if we're not going to use the circle again, which maybe we won't, then that's fine. We can chain that, and that's seventy percent of the code. So it does provide some opportunities uh, for efficiency there to to inter, you know to keep on building these um, chainable. Uh, functions. So we're almost done uh, with the with the chain the change here of cache and the cursor. Uh, one more the shadow. So that's a drop shadow. On occasion we add drop shadows, and so now this drop shadow is kind of cool. It, it replaces circle dot shadow equals a new create js shadow. All that stuff. And you know I almost did the same shadow all the time. I mean not all the time, but it was almost always that that was you know what I was wanting. So now that's a default in there. 
and which means that we can create the drop shadow new circle there it is dot sha and that gets a drop shadow already we don't have to do all of this stuff or even think about it now if you want to change that you're welcome to you can anything you passed into shadow before you just put right in there in those round brackets and uh, then we're chaining drag onto the end so um, there we go. With the addition of these three, the only other one that's outstanding, really, uh, that you use a lot is, uh, well, it could be blend modes. Maybe, maybe uh, blend modes maybe could come in with something. Bleh, sounds a bit funny. We're, we can't really use the same name as the actual property. Like, so I, uh, I wouldn't want to say cursor here because then we wouldn't, the cursor property would be obscured. So um, that's, uh, that's why we went to a short form version here. In this case, we're extending. So we don't even, it's the same word, but um, we're extending a method that already exists. In this one, we're not extending a method, we're replacing a property. And the same with in, in this one, we're replacing a property. So, uh, good. Well, that's a blah, 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 blah. Oh, I was going to say, though, the um, another one that's still there is set bounds. Uh, but because most of the Zim, if not all of the Zim, the only Zim uh, class that or object that doesn't have its bounds set automatically, uh, well, I suppose would be a container. But you can set the bound of the container early, but a, sh a shape maybe. Anyway, uh, set bounds, hardly using it anymore, so I'm not too concerned about it because all of the, the objects and stuff that we're using and, and bitmaps, etc., have their bounds set. The only one maybe would be shape. But even shape, you can pass in bounds when you make the shape now rather than set the bounds after. Okay, so continuing on, we've updated gesture and transform to work properly with masking. Yay! So this is really cool. As a matter of fact, the set mask um is is a tricky thing uh because uh, you can only mask with a shape an actual shape and all of the zim so-called shapes are not really shapes they're containers so the blob and the circle and the triangle they're a container that hold a shape and certainly in the case of a blob and and so forth um hold much more than just a shape so what was happening is when you drag something, it's dragging the whole object, but really the shape inside the object is not moving. And that shape inside the object needs to seem like it's moving for the mask. So when we use the set mask, we're not actually using the shape of the, uh, of the object, we're using a clone of the shape of the object that is hidden, and we're actually physically moving that clone of the shape object so that the mask also seems to move along with it. <laughs> so um, that's being done in Zim Drag, and it was also done in Zim Animate. But then along came a blob, which also had a shape in it that we're moving with control points. Along came transform, where we're transforming. And along came gesture, and <laughs> each time I'd have to go into those things and um, put, you know, relatively complex finicky code to move move the mask of the shape and duplicate and all, you know, all this stuff. So instead, what we've done is we have... Uh, Instead of going into each one and putting the code in there, we've reworked this. And now the uh, set mask itself controls what is happening. So this is done, it's controlled in one place. And out on all the like gesture and transform, there's just like one line of code um, in there and that's it. So uh, that has simplified the back end and, and, and also not not just simplified it but actually made it work it wasn't it wasn't working with these things so now these things um will work with masks so that is great news uh we added a count to tiles so in other words when you tile something with zim tile you don't have to tile uh, a complete grid you can um, much like a sprite sheet, you can sort of say, yeah, tile these rows and columns or columns and rows, but stop at 20 or 17 or, you know, some odd number, I guess 20 probably wouldn't be worried um, if that were a four by five, but mind you, if it were like a four by uh, six, <laughs> would that make sense? Yeah, you could stop at 20. Um, 
I'm not sure if that quite makes sense. I mean, uh, well, whatever. Uh, great, but unfortunately that breaks the parameter structure of tile. So have a look there. We can. The thing is, uh, sprite sheet was already arranged to have a, a count in there, so we figured we should be consistent with the sprite sheet, and and that's why it got inserted. The parameter got inserted in there. Uh, oh, we added a factor parameter to the swiper, so now you can go negative as well in the swipe. So if you swipe this way, you can make the numbers go up, or swipe sort of in a negative sense, you can make the numbers go up. You swipe in a positive sense, you can make the numbers go down uh, easily with a factor, much like we did with um, something else. I can't can't even remember. I think it was a uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, what's that called? Proportion and proportion damp. Okay. A swipe stop event for the swiper. Good enough, all that stuff. You can read over it, really. Now, we in, in Zim 6.7, we added device motion in this portal, as, as mentioned before. We also changed this thing called relative dial to continuous dial. So that's just down here. We started, uh, we made some update, updates to dial. So that's these two, and then we're at the raw. So we're almost there, just some, some talk about the dial. So what dial was doing is you could set a dial, say one to 10, and it would stop it at, at 10. Or you could say, um, what was it called? Uh, limit, limit colon false. And what it would do is it would go one to ten, but it would keep you could keep on spinning it around. And it would go back to, to one, so it would go one to ten and one to ten, or well, we've got the default dial zero to ten, and then it would keep spinning. But uh, each time it would always just loop around to the same numbers and start over again. So uh, that's not the best for everything. If you want a dial to be continuous, to like keep on adding. So like go one to 10 and then next go to 11. So you keep on spinning the dial, it keeps on getting bigger. So we've added a continuous property, which is very handy. We made an Etch-a-Sketch for instance, so we could use dials and I'll show you that Etch-a-Sketch in the next bubbly. Uh, and then it's also got a continuous max and a continuous min. Well, initially we called it relative rather than absolute, but that was a little bit uh, strange. I, I kept on forgetting what it was called and stuff. So I think continuous is a bit clearer. So now we have a continuous dial and that was updated here in 6.7 as well. Continuous is is it. Uh, and we made the dial work properly with the keys. So uh, arrow keys up and arrow key down will go to the continuous max or continuous min or the max or min of the dial just fine and if its limit is set to false what was happening it, it was broken so the the arrows would only go up to the 10 even though if you spin it manually like by dragging it um, it would the limit would be false so you could keep on spinning around so there was just a bit of a bug in the arrow keys with the limit so that's all fixed up now great and here we are at raw. So that was a lot of verbiage. Blah, 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 blah. Hopefully it was okay for you. And you can always come in and read this. Now, if you've never seen the updates before, uh, this, this bubbling will kind of give you an indication as to what's in them and why you might want to continue to look at them. So there's improvements uh, for you to be able to use and when things break as well, of course. All right, so we'll catch you later. If you made it through this, if you made it all the way through this bubbling, it means you're pretty interested in this. Why don't you make sure that you come to the Slack site? So be part of our Zim Slack team. That's everybody who's, you know, working on Zim. Well, who wants to come into the Slack team? We've had about uh, 1,500 uh, comments and uh, carrying ons there uh, in the last three months. So we're pretty active. Come on and, and join us. It would be great uh, to hear your voice zimjs.com <clears throat> slash code <laughs> speaking of voice where'd mine go zimjs.com slash code slash slack s-l-a-c-k it's a free easy to use online forum that a lot of tech companies are working in for their um, their communities and so forth okay uh, we'll see you later um, that's been what has been bubbling at zim have a great day I'm inventor Dan Zen ciao